All right, guys, here's the load. Uh, just gotta roll up the straps, put them away, and get uh, the forklift driver be over here in a minute to unload. We can get on to the next one. About 100 miles away, like I said last night. Um, don't really have to rush too much because I don't. I, I didn't set the appointment up until one o'clock because I didn't know how long it was going to take here. So I want it to be extra, extra cautious in uh, setting up my my pickup time. Um, so we got a little time to kill. We'll take our time getting down there, just save some fuel. That's about all. Uh, Last night I hooked up the inverter, he heated up some soup, that was pretty cool. I definitely gotta get the, um, I need longer wires so that I can uh, get the inverter actually installed. I had this truck for almost two years, still haven't installed it. Still haven't gotten a refrigerator, probably why I'm gaining so much weight from eating all the junk shit out of the truck stop. So we're gonna change that, we're gonna get back into uh, a healthier prior to quitting smoking um, appearance. I, I definitely wasn't healthy on the inside before I quit smoking, but um, I knew when I quit smoking that I was going to gain all this weight, and now that I don't crave and need the food all the time like I did when I first quit, I can finally, um, I've been working on this for over six months now, but I can, it's, it's getting easier and easier to work on it and now I can finally get the stuff inside my truck and start eating fresh and uh, better good stuff so we're gonna finish this up and we'll see you in a little bit you hear the shit it's all time every every time they go forward it's the same sound oh, I feel like I'm getting arrested Wait for it, that's not it. Man, it's not even that hot out. I'm sweating like crazy. Which I'm really happy about. Sweat some of this fat off of me. I hope you guys can hear that. horn even sounds like a cop car. <laughs> That's too funny. I said, that must get annoying. She said, I just tune it out. Don't even hear it anymore. So that, that begs the, the, the question, if you don't hear that siren anymore, what happens when a cop is pulling you over? Or an ambulance or a fire truck or you know something along them lines is coming up behind you. Do you is it still just tuned out or or do you uh, do you recognize it after leaving work? I know when I work doing certain things for so long, it just sticks with me all day long. Or or I, I'll start having dreams about being at work so I imagine if you can tune that out throughout the day you're tuning that out when you leave work that's my my assumption I, I don't I wouldn't know unless I ran the forklift for a week but <laughs> I find it freaking hysterical now anyway we should be out of here in about I should have us done in probably half an hour We'll start working our way down. You have five hours and 49 minutes of remaining drive time.
proceed to the highlighted route. All right, so we are 92 miles away. It's showing an ETA of 11:15. Um, half an hour for her to unload this, 11.45. So I'll be there about an hour, hour and a half early. Like I said, no big deal. Maybe I'll hook the inverter back up and have one of my, my soups. Here's what I did last night. I got the inverter, I put the wires on it, and I just... Ran the wires right out the door, hooked it up to the battery real quick, ran the microwave, and then disconnected the batteries and put the inverter back inside the truck. Um, it's obviously... Obviously a lot more work than I need it to be. But I'll make do for the week, and I won't be eating out of the truck stops, so... I'll be eating healthier and um, and saving money, not not spending money in the truck stop. Um, plus, I'll do a little more of a workout getting in and out of the truck. <laughs> All right, see you in a bit. All right, we're at our pickup. And I looked, the last time we were here was in January. And I can see as much. That new steel structure there was not there in January. They had just finished the end of the white building and we were still traveling in between the two buildings there. They had it closed off for a little bit and we still had to take this route right here to go up and around. They weren't building that building. Unfortunately, as you can see, it's raining pretty good out. At least it's not a downpour, but I'm still going to be soaking wet by the time I'm done here. Man, lots changed since I was here. Jesus. They took a lot of dirt out of here, or they moved a lot of dirt up here, one or the other. Well, hopefully, it'll be, hopefully it will be loaded pretty quickly. Last time I was here, we did, I had to go to one, two, three yards. But the second yard was all the way on the other side. This time I got two yards, but they're right next to each other, so they should be able to get me loaded pretty quick. So we'll see what happens. All right, we're all done. I went with more straps than chains. Truth be told, I don't like chains. It was only supposed to be 48 foot, they ended up giving me 50 foot anyway. Well, what are you gonna do? Um, the reason I don't like chains is because they just get caught on the corners and they, they don't get as tight as you, I mean, you, you can get them pretty tight. But you still, you can get them pretty tight, but they still have so you got the, the, the loop, um, the link, and then it, it'll get caught on the edge, the corner edge of the steel. That's why I really don't like using, especially on this stuff, I don't really like using chains because you can't always get it as tight as you want. You think it's, at, it, you think it's as tight as it'll go, but uh, a couple miles down the road, then chain breaks loose, breaks over that, over that, um, that edge and then the chains loose so I put three chains on there um, basically for extra securement uh, the straps are, are my main securement uh, and they're more than fine they, they're 5400 pounds 
Let's see, the load's supposed to weigh about 40,000 pounds, so I need to secure 20,000 pounds. So, four straps is technically enough securement. I have five straps and three chains. I'm got enough securement for 80,000 pounds worth of, 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 of product, technically. 6, 12, 18, on top of 25, that's 25 and 18, 43,000. So we'll call it we'll call it forty five thousand because I'm not counting the the extra six hundred pounds per chain and the extra four hundred pounds per strap. So forty five thousand. That's good for ninety thousand pounds of product, which is actually more than that because I'm not doing the exact math for it. So I'm going to get changed into something else. My pants are soaked, my shirt is soaked. 50-50 of sweat and 50 water. Um, and then I'm gonna go get in line and get out of here. I still have almost six hours to drive. Just under six hours. By the time I get out of here, let's say five hours, that's 300 miles up the road. And it's only 860 miles. Actually, it's like 870 Proceed miles. Proceed to the highlighted route. 870 miles, and I think that's taking me the way I wanna go. Nope, that's taking me 90. All right, so we're looking at an extra 17 miles uh, to take the 86. Not sure if I mentioned that last time or if I actually went through and figured it out. Um, I know it's another like $97 to go across New York on 90 versus taking the extra 17 miles. Uh, and they're actually fixing 86 a lot, so... Um, the western side is still pretty rough, but they're taking care of one section at a time and they're uh, basically putting another two inch layer of pavement over top of all the cracks and divots and everything everywhere. Um, freaking gear. The shortest way is actually uh, 860 miles, I believe is what it said. And that's taking 80 all the way to Jersey to 287, 287 to 95, and then 95 up through Connecticut into Mass. Um, the only downfall about going that way is there's a lot more traffic on 80 on, on 95 in Connecticut and 287 and 80 in Jersey depending on the time of day um, and then on top of that I have to pay for Tappan Zee Bridge No, that's it, just the Tappan Zee Bridge. Uh, which would probably be cheaper than going straight across. Uh, let's see, I have to pay the last $5 or so in New York. Um, from Albany to Mass. Oh, well, Albany to Cannon, basically. Um, and then the Mass 
turnpike, which I think is like 20 bucks, 30 bucks. But there's a hell of a lot less traffic. There's quite a bit of traffic first thing in the morning and at the end of the day. But for the most part, Mass Turnpike is pretty clear until you get like right over into Boston. Either way, the way we're going, we're taking, um, I'm not sure exactly how we're getting out of here. Let's see. US 30, which goes into 69 a little bit, 469, uh, to US 24, US 24 all the way to, uh, looks like US 23, which it's all cluster right there, uh, where I'll hit 80, 90 in Ohio. Um, if I'm not mistaken, it's not going to give me the town name. If I'm not mistaken, that's not too far from where I was this morning. Perrysburg. Yeah, there's Perrysburg. Um, we'll take 80, 90 to 90 to 86, 86, uh, back to 90, and then 90, I forget that U.S. highway there. In mass, um, oh, this has me taking 90 to 495 to 95 south. Okay, yeah, 95 south because it's right there on the border of, damn it, Rhode Island and Mass and uh, and Massachusetts. I thought we were taking a different highway, but so that's the route and we're going to get going.